Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For your safety, the fire exits are here and there. Now, please welcome to the stage Doug, Simon, and Bud Davenport. exciting new show and tonight we want to present it to you for the first time. Yeah, uh, but hopefully not the last time. <laughs> With any luck we are hoping to take our show to Broadway. <laughs> yes, and as many of you already know, there are with us in the audience tonight some very big Broadway producers. Yeah, chances are, if you don't know the person sitting next to you, they're probably a big Broadway producer. <laughs> so? Tell them to produce our show! Yes, please. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> now, just before we get started, we do want to be professional, so here are a few introductions. Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Mr. Bud Davenport. My name is Doug Simon. And, and over here on the piano, we have, um... Oh, uh, yeah, I want to say Chris. Chris Charles. Charles, oh, Charles, oh, get up oh, and Charles, oh, ladies and gentlemen! And so writing a musical is not easy. No, hats off to you, Elton John. But we did it! <laughs> no, I wrote what we call the book of the musical. Yeah, the script. It's, and I wrote the music. And the score. And the songs. Oh, beautiful songs, man. <laughs> Thank you. And the lyrics. Well, we, we wrote those, those together. together. <laughs> All right, so you're probably sitting there and thinking to yourself, yeah, so you wrote a show, huh? But what is it about? Hmm. I don't know, Doug. You wrote the script. Why don't you tell us? All right, I will. It is about Mr. Johann Gutenberg. Who's he? Well, he is the guy who invented the printing press. Yes, and then used it to print up a bunch of copies of the Bible. Hmm, but what else did he do? Well, we did some research to find out. Google, yes. <laughs> we typed in Johann Gutenberg into Google and printed out the first thing that came up. Oh, read it, bud. Go on, read it. Read it. <clears throat> Gutenberg, comma, Johann, German printer, born around the year 1400. Detailed records of his life and work are scant. <laughs> scant? Uh, okay, clearly research was not gonna help us. No, so we took a different approach. Historical fiction! Yes, but, but what is historical fiction? It's fiction that's true. <laughs> now, when you normally go and see a hit Broadway musical, you can expect to see lots of amazing things, like, like puppets. Uh, turntables. Helicopters. And people who used to be famous. Well, you're gonna see a lot of that in tonight's show, too. But you are going to have to use your imagination to see them. For example... Oh, hey, bud! Where are you going? Nowhere, Doug. I'm on a turntable! <laughs> Imagine! <laughs> now, what you're gonna see tonight is what we call a reading of a musical. Uh, yes, but what is a reading of a musical? Yeah, yeah, does it mean we're gonna print out copies of the script and give it to you so you can read it? No! <laughs> of course not! 
No, what it means is that there's no set. There's no costumes. We only have a few props, and there is no cast. Yes, that's right. It is just me and Doug. Yep. Tonight we're going to sing all of the songs, <laughs> perform all of the roles, and give you guys a little help to understand the potential of what we have written. Yeah, well, I think the key word there is potential. <laughs> well, I also like the word hope. <laughs> no. There are an awful lot of characters in this show. How are we going to differentiate, huh? By using these hats! Hey, right! <laughs> so, for example, when I put on this hat, I am the boot black. Uh, yes, and um, I, uh, I, I'm a woman! <laughs> oh, shut up. Now, you're going to see that our show is set in olden times, and that means a lot of the characters may talk a little something like this. Uh, cheerio! And... Excuse me, sir, can I help you with your bucket? <laughs> also, very important, many of the characters in this show cannot read. Of course, that all changes with the climactic invention of... The, the printing press. <laughs> and now, just before we get started, we uh, do want to take a second to talk about something pretty serious, and that is the Holocaust. Now, every important musical has to tackle at least one incredibly serious issue. Like racism. Or Vietnam. Or a man with half a face. <laughs> now, our show <laughs> is set in Germany, so our serious issue is the Holocaust. Now, Germans hate Jews. No, 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 not all of them. <laughs> but most of them. Maybe not anymore. But they used to. <laughs> that hatred is in this show. It has to be. Because it makes our show important. <laughs> Gutenberg the Musical! <laughs> Prologue. Lights rise on the squalid stinky bedroom of a friend of Gutenberg. The roof is made of dirty thatch. There are rats in the corner gnawing on stinky cheese. And lying absolutely still in the middle of the room without moving is a dead baby. <laughs> Gutenberg's friend and the doctor examine the dead baby. <laughs> Well, we did all we could, but I'm afraid that your baby is dead. <laughs> but I gave him this mother, son! <laughs> uh, well, them ain't medicine. Them's jelly beans. Jelly beans? But if but... only you could read. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> jelly beans! Not medicine! <laughs> Only I could read, my son he wouldn't need an allergy. Stupid beans, not medicine. Oh God, here in this jar, I can't read what these are. Damn jelly beans. Hello, friend. Is there anything that Johann Gutenberg can do? Shut up! <laughs> a friend of Gutenberg sobs like a woman. Wow! He cradles his dead baby in his illiterate arms. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Act one, scene one. Schlimmer, Germany. A German town full of German things like feet and short pants. <laughs> Gutenberg walks down the streets of this medieval burg and encounters a woman and her daughter on their way to market. They're carrying kraut. Sauerkraut! Oh, good morning, Mr. Gutenberg! Please, call me Johan. Johan Gutenberg. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gutenberg! <laughs> oh, it's Gutenberg. <laughs> How are you today, little girl? Oh, as good as I can be, considering I can't read. Another woman throws open her shutters to greet the morning. Oh! She dumps her stinky chamber pot and suddenly the town of Schlimmer is alive. Not alive like a monster, it's alive like a town! It's nice to live in medieval Germany in the beautiful town of Schlimmer. We all get along in perfect harmony. 
And I'm the beef fat trimmer. Hey! The beef comes in all white with fat. It leaves a good fit slimmer. We're just drunk scum and heard from the bar in a beautiful town of Slimmer. <laughs> hey, hey, Dudelberg, have you got any wine, mate? Yeah, you're the wine presser. Tell us where the wine is. Is it over here? Well, it's not over here. Yeah, I know, fellas, my wine isn't the answer to all of your problems. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, come on, it's not like we can read yeah. now, is it? Yeah. I can't read. Come on, Dudelberg, let's have some fun. He's the best chap around, at least in this town, sure as shooting bag. Please call me Johan. Oh, that good bag. It's Johan. <laughs> oh, Gutenberg. Oh, it's the blue black. Shine your Gutenberg. Oh, sure thing, the black. You're a man in his pride, making friends all the time. No refuting bag. <laughs> Ten ducats. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh that Gutenberg. <laughs> all right now, fellas, I best be getting back to my wine press shop. But don't you guys have anything to do? <laughs> Who is it? You can't read. You can't be why I lost it. You can't guys, read. guys, let's not fight. Come on, I'll buy you a flower from that adorable little flower girl. Here's a pose you can wear on your lapel. I stole it from a Jew. He cried and he fought, so I sent him off to hell. So now it belongs to you. Lovely Schwimmer, you are the best darn town in Germany. Gutenberg, 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 Gutenberg. Yeah. Ooh, here we go. Big finish time. Do you love it? They are loving it. of the world of Schlimmer. Yes, it's a tiny town. Very tiny. The kind of town that you might read about in travel magazines or murder mysteries. Yes, yeah, who done it? Yeah, you know, the kind of town where everyone is friendly. Yes, yes. But also a little bit suspicious. So, you might see something like this. <clears throat> Well, if it isn't my good friend Doug Simon stopping by for a shave and a haircut. I sure am, Barbara. Oh, hey, Barbara, look, I got you a gift. It's this cupcake thing. Oh, why, well, thank you very oh, much. Oh, 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 oh. This cupcake is poison! I can't stop killing! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, as you can see, it is the kind of town where absolutely anything can happen. And so, we must start our story. Scene two, Gutenberg's wine press shop. The roof is made of dirty thatch, and there are shelves filled with old wine bottles. And Helvetica, a beautiful German girl with blonde hair and big, beautiful breasts, is standing in her bucket, stomping on grapes. Gutenberg enters. <laughs> oh, Gutenberg! Hello! Oh, man, I love this town. And I love you. <laughs> there is an extremely long, awkward pause. <laughs> well, hey, have you seen my dream journal? I had the most amazing dream last night, and I want to turn it into a poem. <laughs> oh, a poem? Will you read it to me? No, journals are private. <laughs> yes, sir. I almost forgot. Here, I got you a flower. There you go. Oh, it's beautiful! It's from that horrible little anti-Semitic flower girl from down the street. Destroy it at once! Yes, sir. There will be no hatred in my shop. I, I 
Are you hungry? Yes, I am. Would you like me to bake a lamb for you? <laughs> <laughs> but I would like some stew, actually. Uh, stew, right away, sir. Yes. Good girl. I love you. What? You love me? Oh, oh no. So sorry, no. I meant you, as in uh, E W E. <laughs> you. E W who? You. Me? Oh no, it's a stew. It's a female lamb stew. Oh, I don't understand. Why can no one in this town read? Well, we have nothing to read. Oh. oh. I see. And that is the problem. If you need me, I'll be in my wine press room. Pressing wine. Oh, here's your stew. I've made it hot. And ready. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, Barbara? How about oh, it? Oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> you know, I couldn't make it without you. <laughs> <laughs> the wine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Wonderful, sir. I watch him working at his press. I watch him make his wine. I stop the grapes and dream about the day I'll make him mine. But I know that day will never come Cause I am too obtuse I'm just too dumb to understand Anything but this grape juice And I, I can't read I can't read him He's all Greek to me but I, 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 I still need him Like a grape that needs a squeeze His brain is bigger than my brain He can spell and count by twos He's so smart and good at stuff And all I have is boobs to milk a cow and sit upon a stool and cows they never ask you much no wonder I'm a fool there's no school and I I am dumb I am dumb struck every time he says my name It's been my name since birth, but there's one name I traded for on this flat planet Earth. So I'll stand here in my bucket and one day I'll be a better cop.
Now that was the love ballad. Yes, but um, what is a love ballad? Well, you see, people like me and Bud call a song like that the I want song because Helvetica wants Gutenberg. <laughs> yes, but the real question is, does Gutenberg know that? I don't think so. Right, now you're probably sitting there and thinking to yourselves, well, did Helvetica actually exist? Hmm, probably. Yes, now history tells us that in olden times there were a lot of poor wenches. So, if Helvetica did exist, Gutenberg probably knew her. <laughs> also, her name is a font. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't name fonts after anybody these days. That's true. Yeah. I mean, not even Nelson Mandela. I mean, and, you know, he conquered Africa, yeah. so. <laughs> Mandela would be a noble font. Yeah, noble. Yeah. But anyway, it is now time to meet the bad guys Monk and his henchman, Young Monk. Watch <laughs> out! Scene three. The church on the hill. The roof is made of dirty thatch. And in the corner, there's a large Bible. And on this wall, a velvet painting of Jesus crying. Monk, an evil man who hates God, is sitting at his desk sharpening his pencil. <laughs> He's really good at it. Young Monk enters. <clears throat> oh, hey there, Monk. Look, I, uh, I found a cat in the alleyway. <laughs> Give him to me. Okay, here you go. Meow. Oh, look at you, pretty kitty. Oh, I think I shall call you Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Young Monk. What are you doing over there with that Bible? Me? Oh, no, me, nothing. I'm just trying to teach myself how to read. <laughs> Get him, Satan! <laughs> you see what happens when you try to learn how to read, young monk? <laughs> now, one more time. What were you doing over there with that Bible? Nothing. I wasn't doing it. <laughs> That's right. As long as I'm the monk, no one in this town is going to learn how to read. That way, the Bible says whatever I say it says. <laughs> Un unless, of course, someone were to create a machine that prints books and then used it to print up a bunch of copies of the Bible and then... Uh, no, distribute them to the masses. You're hurting I, Satan! No, I don't want to hurt Satan. I love you, Satan. I love you. I do. I do. I do. I do. I, do. I love Satan! You are such a bad monk! <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. When I was a young monk, I tended to my flock. I prayed to Jesus. I helped the poor. I wore a nice monk smock. I did what I should. I was always so good. But then I met the devil in a haunted German woods. That sounds scary. Oh, it wasn't scary, young monk. It was awesome. The devil was a lady. He looked just like my mom. Oh. He held me like a baby, like a baby. I sucked my thumb. No, I told the devil I'd do what he said. He said, glad to hear it. Now kill your daddy dead. Haunted German wood, haunted German wood. You made me what I am today, you haunted German wood. I have goosebumps. <laughs> the story is only just beginning, young monk. <laughs> into my daddy's house with that Bible by my side. I yelled greetings from the devil. <laughs> I meant my daddy died. It says in the Bible that thou shalt not kill. But I shall did it that day. And I guess I always win. Haunted German wood, haunted German wood. You taught me how to kill a man. You haunted German wood. I 
worships Satan. <laughs> the devil said he had to go back where he'd come from. But he told me, boy, stay in the church and keep the people dumb. You'll have more power if they think you're good. But don't forget the evil and that haunted German word. Hey, haunted German word, haunted German word. You're haunted and you're German. You're haunted German. What I learned in that haunted German. Hey, yeah! Yeah! Now that, now that is a bad monk. Well, in his defense, he was tricked by the devil. Yeah, well, we all get tricked by the devil sometimes, hey, bud? <laughs> My dad was tricked by the devil. <laughs> he cheated on my mom with a bank teller. A very pretty bank teller, though. <laughs> uh, uh, my parents are still together, though, so... <laughs> Married. <laughs> now, we hate Monk, and we want you guys to hate him, too. But we want you to hate him for a reason. <laughs> yes, that's right. No, you can't just say a character is evil. No, no. You gotta know why he's evil. Yeah, and that is why we had Monk kill his dad. Yes. And that is called character development. <laughs> now, I'm, I think I overheard the monk saying something about how he doesn't want someone to create a machine that prints books. Uh-oh. Guess who's about to make a machine that prints books? <laughs> C4. Gutenberg's wine press shop. It is very late at night. The clock on the wall says, like, 2 a.m. probably. <laughs> Gutenberg is working at his press. Oh, I need a break. When I'm at my press, I like to leave my body, let my mind roam free, and think about my day. Somebody died, somebody cried, somebody lied, I ain't still. And yet, there's a pain of something niggling at my head. Oh, I can't forget, but still I can't remember what the people of Schlimmer said. I cannot read, I cannot read, I cannot read, I hate Jews! <laughs> something. Here, I'll take this clock. What can this be? Can this clock ever teach people to read? No, it cannot. It goes in the trash. But wait, there might be something cool in the trash. Oh, it's just an old grape. That's not what I need. Grapes are completely useless. No, Schrimmer must read. But what can I do? Wait a minute! This grape juice press. I'm gonna take this press and make it print some words. I'm gonna change the press. Oh, I know it sounds absurd. I'm gonna take the grapes out, put letters in, put letters where the grapes happen. I'm gonna change this press and make it print some words. <laughs> And so Gutenberg worked long into the night, changing history to a boogie woogie beat. You go on there, Johann Gutenberg. You invent that printing press for all of us. Well, it's the first printing press in history. It's gonna print up books for you and me. It's a printing press. It's gonna print some words. Yeah. <laughs> Helvetica enters. Gutenberg! Hello! Look what I have just invented! <laughs> what is it? 
it? It's a printing press. Oh, how wonderful! Shall we toast? No! <laughs> My God! <laughs> Silly girl, we don't make wine anymore. We make words! What? Yeah! <laughs> ah, now that I'm done, get ready to read. This will be going down in history. Remember my face, now there's a glimmer in Schlimmer. And that glimmer, it is me! trying to set the most important moment in history to music. <laughs> hey man, you did a pretty good job. Well, you wrote me a pretty good story, so... <laughs> Dude, this is awesome! <laughs> We're doing it! I, know, I, know. I just want to say something. I'm gonna go off script for a second here. You do! You go off script! Go off! Go. I would just like to say, when I am singing that song, well, I am singing about the printing press, but... I'm thinking about our musical. We wrote a musical, man! <laughs> Not even Johann Gutenberg could do that. <laughs> no, no, no. If this show makes it to Broadway, it'll be an adventure 600 years in the making. No, if this show goes to Broadway, then I'm quitting my job at the nursing home. <laughs> well, I'm quitting my job at Starbucks. What? <laughs> no, don't do that. You're a senior barista. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're right, I'll, I'll probably stay. Yeah. There's great benefits there. Yeah. Now, I know you're probably sitting there and thinking to yourselves, hang on a minute, a wine presser invented the printing press. Well, it makes sense. He's, he's already familiar with pressing things. Mm, but what is the difference between a wine press and a printing press? One makes you drink, and the other makes you think. <laughs> and that was almost a lyric. Yeah, now, Gutenberg is amazing, but uh, unless I'm crazy, he is not the only character in this show. You are not crazy. Scene 5, The Streets of Schlimmer. The sky is sad, and the air smells like trash. Young Monk is walking in the rain. <laughs> I'm just too dumb to understand why he treats me like a dog <laughs> and like a dog. I, I can't I can't I don't know how Why can't someone teach me how the boot black shop. Dangle, dangle, dangle. Oh, young monk. Oh, hey there, boot black. I've got another pencil. And I've got a big pair of boot tongs. Allow me to remove it. Oh, okay. Thanks, boot black. <laughs> now that is the third pencil this week, young monk. Oh, I know. Monk is an abuser. Then why do you stay with him? Well, I think that I can change him. Young monk, we boot blacks, we have a saying. If you're in a bad situation, get out of it. Oh. Oh, thanks, boot black. I just can't help but see a little bit of good in him, you know. He's just like this tiny little seedling that just needs the water of me. And then with a little bit of luck, that me water will help him grow into a giant tree of goodness. <laughs> oh, oh no. Please don't. Oh. 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 Here, here. Um, I know what will cheer you up. Have a biscuit. Biscuits, biscuits, I want 
you deep inside of me, biscuits. <laughs> you sure love your biscuits, young boy. I sure do. Put them in my tummy and they're nice and sweet. Put them in the oven and they're good to eat. Put them on a shelf and they're out of reach, biscuits. They taste really yummy in the time of war. They taste really yummy even on the floor. They taste really yummy, I want some more. We're not too poor to eat biscuits. Biscuits. I want you deep inside of me, biscuits. Biscuits. You make me want to die. When the moon turns red, you can eat a biscuit when we're all dead. Biscuits and biscuits and to do with anything. <laughs> this show is not about biscuits. <laughs> so what are we doing? <laughs> well, you see, people like me and Bud call a song like that a charm song. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we need a charm song? Well, you see, a charm song gives the audience a break from watching the stuff they actually care about. <laughs> <laughs> also, a charm song is a very good way of getting a really famous person to play a really tiny part. <laughs> yeah, you see, we are hoping that one day the role of young monk will be played by Mr. Alan Rickman. <laughs> he's, he's amazing. Uh, I, I will count to three. I will Potter. not be a four. Potter. 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 Cut your heart out with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> But we must now move on to the story. Scene six. The Schlimmer Market. A stinky place full of rotten fruit, dead bodies, and antiques. Rotten fruit over here. of Gutenberg spread like the plague. Hey, Big Fat Trim, I see you chopping some meat. I just can't seem to chop off these feet. Four more steaks and I'll finish the herd. Then I'll take a break and tell me what's the bird? What's the bird? What's the bird? Well, I shouldn't say this, but late last night in the wine press shop there was a light. I saw Gutenberg through that window pane. He was sweating, he was working, he was shouting his name! I wouldn't bet money, but I think it's true that our wine-making friend was making something new. Oh, really? Well, you didn't hear it from me. I'm just a beef fat trimmer trimming the fat off the beef. I get it! What's the bird? What's the bird? Another What's woman goes to buy some What's cheese. What's the bird? Belle Hazen! Hey, I'm milking a cow! Now, well, do you really have to milk that cow right now? Because I got hot gossip, just won't keep. Gutenberg didn't get much sleep last night. Is that right? He might be working on something shadier. He might be working on a special lady. A special lady? Come on, wish it was me. See, I'm very attracted to Mr. G. Because he's got great buns and he's got great pets. I'll be heartbroken if he's having sex without me. I see. Love me. Monster bird! Monster bird! Another Monster woman bird. sees friends in a field. What? Hey, have you heard what they're saying? Mr. Gutenberg's got a girl. He might have kissed her. But I don't believe it. No, I think it's wrong. I've got my own theory why he was up so long. He wasn't making love or playing games of chance. No, while Gutenberg was teaching himself to dance. You want to go and spread that rumor? Maybe, but first I've got to bury my dead baby. Well, that's horrible. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> What's the word? What's the word? A man is buying some apricots. Well, hey there, man. I see you're buying some fruit. <laughs> Have you heard the news about it? Alfred Gutenberg 
seems he's done something great, but all we know for certain is he was up late. Oh no, it's Monk! Say no more, my childless friend. I'll find out where this rumor ends. I'll head on over to the wine press shop. And if he's up to something naughty, I'll make it stop! Whisper the secret! Whisper the secret! Whisper! Whisper! I hate whispering! Whisper the secret! Gossip! <laughs> is headed over to the wine press shop. Uh, what's gonna happen? Let's find out. <laughs> Scene seven. Gutenberg's wine press shop. Helvetica is crying in her bucket. <laughs> Monk enters. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Anybody home? This is not a home. <laughs> well, I'm just here to pick up some wine. For the sacrament. We don't make wine. Not anymore. Oh. You must be Helvetica. How did you know my name? Because I'm a monk. I know everything. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so you know that I love Gutenberg? Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I did not know that. Oh. Until now! And now I know everything! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so, so you know that Gutenberg has invented the printing press? What? Who? Who invented the printing press? Johann Gutenberg did. Johann Gutenberg <laughs> invented the printing press. <laughs> what year is this? 1450. Johann Gutenberg <laughs> invented the printing press in the year 1450. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did, and it's right here. Well, we'll just see about that. <laughs> ah! Oh, it burns! Oh! <laughs> you, you know what I think, Helvetica? Yeah. I think you are gonna destroy this printing press. Why? Because if you don't make wine anymore, then what use does Gutenberg have for you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> poor, poor Helvetica. You've made wine probably about a million times, you dumb German wench. on your dress. Isn't it time to stop the press? You mean destroy Gutenberg's printing press? That's right, Helvetica. The only thing standing between you and Gutenberg is this here printing press. <laughs> stop the press. You gotta stop the press or the press will stop you. Stop the press. You can get him back if you give it a chop. You stop his great boy. I'll get out if I smash his press. He'll cry and I'll be right there to dry his eyes. I feel his progress yes. right here on my breast. Yes. Maybe it's time to stop the press. Stop the press. You can stop the press with a simple pencil. Stop the press. Oh, I know I gotta do it, but I'm feeling tense. Will Gutenberg be mad? Bye.
my bidding. have just destroyed the printing press. Yeah, yeah. You know what, let me say something. History doesn't always happen like we think. Yeah, no, no. History is not always as it seems in the so-called history books. <laughs> also, this may not have happened. <laughs> but it could have! Yes, yes, you see, we realize that once Gutenberg had invented the printing press, well, then there was no more story. <laughs> so we destroyed it! And now anything can happen. <laughs> yes, and what is about to happen is the big Act 1 finale. Now, as many of you are already aware, every big Broadway musical has to finish its first act with a big rock song. And that is why we are about to send you rock into the restrooms. <laughs> Elderly patrons may want to turn down their hearing devices. In an actual production, this song would include electric guitars and lasers. Scene 8! The rooftops of Slimmer. Gutenberg stands, straddling a chimney. Smoke billows up round his face. When I got out of bed today, History was a lot more boring than I thought in a different way. Now the bird of inspiration soaring. Look at these hands. They are attached to a normal man. A normal man who probably changed your world. Tomorrow is tonight. It's a history and future by Jason Chimney, he's surrounded by fire and bats. Today I killed the future. Now my badness knows no bounds. My plan unfurled to trick that girl. Now the bird of inspiration's on the ground. Splat! Ha! I crossed his dream. You don't change the world with a dumb machine. At least not while this monk is still in town. Tomorrow tonight. It's a history and future bite. Tomorrow is tonight. Helmetica is also on a roof. <laughs> I feel like a bird. A bird who just destroyed the printing press. A bird who's in some serious I don't have wings. That is bad for flying things. Monks in command. Don't say can't when you could say can. You only get one chance to be a star. Tomorrow is tonight. It's a history and future. Check. Broadway producers. <laughs> Broadway producers, are we all back? 
Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Now, Bud and I were talking during intermission, and we thought that you must be sitting there and thinking to yourselves, I love this show more than any show I have ever seen, ever. <laughs> Who are these guys on stage? Huh? Yeah. Who are we? Right. So we thought we'd just take a second to tell you a little bit about us. Uh, uh, or we. Right, yes. Oh, so thank you, Helvetica. Oh, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's a little callback. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we can be jokesters sometimes, yes. but we also know how to be serious. Take it, bud. Right, so um, I'm Mr. Bud Davenport, that much you already know. But um, what you may not know is that I'm 29, uh, I'm single, and I love to make music. Watch out, ladies. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, I am looking for a wife. Uh, <laughs> other than Doug. <laughs> Sometimes we act like an old married couple. Oh, <laughs> we should so pass impressive. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 but I am. <laughs> My name is Doug Simon. I'm 26 years old. I live in a studio apartment above an incredibly loud pet store, and I, I used to own a cat. <laughs> Until it died. <laughs> <laughs> so Gutenberg music. <laughs> Why did we write it? That's a good question, bud. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious to everyone here why we wrote about Mr. A. L. Hahn at Gutenberg. Yes, he's amazing. Like the most important man in history. <laughs> yes, yes. But why a musical? Well, um, to answer that question, I, I want to take you back in time to the year 2013. The year of the snag. Yes, now Bud had just been fired from his job at the Great American Cookie Company. I stole a bunch of cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, he needed some cheering up. So I said, hey Bud, why don't we sell your car and go and see a Broadway show? Huh? Now, I have never been to a Broadway show, but I did have a ton of cast recordings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We used to do lip sync concerts for people in wheelchairs. So they were a great audience. But you know what? After we went to Broadway, I, I, I thought, hey, I, I thought to myself, you know, I don't want to pretend to sing other people's songs. No, 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 no. I want other people to pretend to sing my songs. Yeah, now we were not successful right away. <laughs> no, no. Our first show was Stephen King the Musical. <laughs> yes, yes. It was every Stephen King book in one show. Well, I still think that that could work, man. Yeah, totally. Um, our, our next show was all about vampires. Yes, and we learned that shows about vampires do not work. No, no. no. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to Gutenberg the musical. Yes, the second act. Yes, yes. Now, writing the second act of a musical is not easy. No, no. Many wonderful Broadway shows have been completely destroyed by a terrible second act. Yeah, like, oh, like West Side Story? <laughs> Godspell? Uh, Oklahoma? <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar? <laughs> uh, guys and Dolls? Um... The, the Passion of the Christ. They're all terrible. <laughs> no, no. Wonderful, wonderful shows. Of course, we love those shows. We love them. Yes, but um, after intermission, Doug and I fall asleep. Yeah. yeah, you see, second acts are boring. They're all about ending stuff and, and wrapping up loose ends. <laughs> we like loose ends. Everybody does. Yes. Which is why we did not worry about wrapping up this story in a nice shiny bow for you. <laughs> no. A story is not a present. It's nothing like a present. No. But if it was, then we'd want to give it to you. Yeah, so uh, maybe you could take it to Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well... Speaking of stories, Doug, um, where did we leave off with the <laughs> historical tale of Mr. Johann Gutenberg? Well, at the end of the first act, Monk and Helvetica destroyed the printing press. Yes, and Gutenberg still doesn't know that, and Helvetica feels awful about it. She made a mistake. Well, sometimes we all make mistakes. Act two. Second prologue. The streets of Schlimmer. It is very early in the morning. 
So early, the dirt streets are still covered with yesterday's vegetables. <laughs> the stage is filled with doom and also fog. Boot Black and Daughter meet on the street. Boot Black, Daughter, had a bad dream last night. I know. There were things. Were they scary? Yes, sir. Very scary. I had bad dreams. Of meat. They were turning overdone and burning life symbols in dreams. Symbols turning symbols turning symbols symbols. Black cats, men with ladders, thirteen mirrors shattered by a war. Tragic dreams like this are always magic. What does it mean? <laughs> now that was a nightmare. People like me and Bob call a little scene like that. Foreshadowing. <laughs> yes, but what is foreshadowing? Well, I'll tell you later. Hit it! Act two, scene one. An old timey bar called the Rusty German. The roof is made of dirty thatch, and the floor is covered with peanut shells. Gutenberg sits at the bar. He is drunk. I am drunk. I have been drinking wine and mead, and now my face is numb. Hey, drunk! Huh? I can't wait till you learn to read. Do what? I'm so cute and so dumb, and you smell like a piece of horse. Hey, hey! Get your face drunk! That's right, I am drunk for the last time. Oh no! That's right, drunk. After tonight, old Gutenberg's not drinking wine anymore. I'm drinking words. You can't drink words. Not so fast, that drunk. Words can take on any form or shape. <laughs> You've gone insane. Words are like wine from the better grape. Huh? The grape of your brain. Ours, oh, they so sweet. But I so just neat. Nothing can compete. I'm gonna get drunk off of words. I'm gonna come home late. I'm gonna stink of words. Why is all the time I really want is just a word. Words, words, words. So I'm gonna go get a drink. See ya! Hey, hey, what's that? Then I drink. How oh, good folks talking about getting drunk off of words. Well, that sounds stupid. It's not. It's not. Words make you feel all tingly inside. Yeah, but that's exactly what alcohol does. Yes! <laughs> but words do it without the crippling chemical addictions. Oh, well, that is the part that I don't really like. <laughs> well, then, pull up a seat. This is our treat. Guess we should really be. We're gonna get drunk off our words. I'm gonna start a fight. I'm gonna vomit words. Close. <laughs> 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 I 
I don't understand. Well, wine can make you do crazy things, huh? <laughs> Before we danced, you said my name. Yes, that's because I love you. Oh, yes, a stew, female lamb oh, stew. No, yes, no, yes. Well, no. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> but I also love you. I'm firing you as my grape stomper, but I'd like to hire you as my wife! Wanting to get drunk off of words? Oh, does that mean what I think it means? I don't know, bud. It's called a metaphor. But what is a metaphor? Well, a metaphor is when you say one thing, you mean another, and you're not lying. <laughs> now, not only in that song did we see Gutenberg, mm -hmm. uh, we also we also saw Helvetica, and that is an interesting point. But also. We knew that we needed to have a heck of a lot of fun in that big Act 2 opener. And pretty much the funnest thing that you can ever, ever do is get really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Doug used to get drunk a lot. <laughs> My name is uh, Doug Simon and I was an alcoholic. <laughs> For one whole summer. <laughs> he slept in my yard. And I learned that being an alcoholic is really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, we also saw Helvetica, and I'm pretty sure that Gutenberg said that he loved her. And then Helvetica ran away. I wonder where she went. Scene two, the church on the hill. Monk has been taking confession from the anti-Semitic flower girl, and they are having way too much fun. Mm. We're done, flower girl. You are completely <laughs> without sin. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, flower girl, for these beautiful flowers. I love them almost as much as you hate <laughs> the flower girl exits. Helvetica enters. Oh, oh, monk, monk, I need to speak with you. It's Gutenberg's press. We've got to fix it. Oh, poor, poor Helvetica. I'm afraid the Bible says there are no second chances. Oh, it does? Yeah. <laughs> Towards the end. Uh, yeah. but, but Gutenberg, he loves me. I know. I know everything. I knew love once as well. Sweet, sweet. 
we love. But then I killed her! <laughs> Young monk enters. Oh, well, hey, hey there, Monk. Uh, Mr. Gutenberg is outside waiting to see you. Oh, he's come to rescue me. Oh, my God. Uh, not so fast. I must plot. I must plan. Aha! I've got it. Young Monk, take Helvetica and lock her in the tower. Oh, but why? Hurry up! Because I said so. Yeah. You are such a bad monk. <laughs> you have no idea. I have some idea. <laughs> Young monk and Helvetica exit. You come with me. Oh, no, don't take me. Gutenberg <laughs> enters. Oh, hey, man. Nice church. <laughs> well, well, well. You must be Gutenberg. Please call me Johan. Johan. Gutenberg. Oh, well, Mr. Johann Gutenberg, what brings you to my church on the hill? This big Bible. What? Last night I invented the printing press, and I want to print the Bible with it. I'm going to call it the Gutenberg Bible. Ah! A Bible that we printed and distributed to the masses. He must not know that the printing press has been destroyed. <laughs> I shall toy with him. Tell me, Johan Gutenberg, you ever thought about becoming a monk? I did once, but it seems really boring. No, Gutenberg! Monking is power! Monk with me! Come live here, I think you'll like it. I've got a cat! Plus there's food! Delicious, loaves and fishes. Here, taste that! I don't know if I should stay and die. Somehow it don't feel
Oh, Gutenberg, you're such a mess. Your life is caught up in that press. You'll never come to holiness. <laughs> inspired by Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> People talking about God these days. Yes, and there's a heck of a lot of people talking about stuff, too. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? There's some people out there that think you don't even need stuff. Yeah, they think that all you need is the Bible. Yeah, we think that's stupid. I mean, it's, it's the sound of a child's laughter in the Bible. Uh, what about the beauty of a sunset? What about bacon, babe? Hey, now don't get us wrong. We love the Bible. No, 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 we love it. We love it. Both parts, too. Yes. There are so it. many animals in yes, there. Yes, yes. And Gutenberg loved the Bible, too. Which is why he wanted everyone to read it. And that is exactly why Monk doesn't want him to have it. No, you see, Monk wants power. Yes. When you know something that other people don't, then that is the power. Yes. Uh, for example, um, I am going to tell Doug a secret, okay? <laughs> Now, I know the secret, you guys don't. And that is power. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to have the power over you, no, no, no. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Bud here is a virgin. <laughs> yes, um, I, I am saving myself a marriage. Ladies. <laughs> right, uh, so, um, uh, so, so now you all know, and um, you, all, you all have the, the power. Yeah. And that is exactly what Gutenberg wanted. Yes, but uh, the real question is, what does Helvetica want? Scene 3, the monk's evil tower. It is dark and dank. The floor is covered with rats. <laughs> Helvetica stands at her window, overlooking the moon. I'm in a tower with rats and some feces. <laughs> and the man I adore is so close, but yet so far. If he were here, I would ask him to squeeze these. <laughs> My heart is one big star. I'm blubbering like a retarded lady. But maybe I ought to be, maybe I ought to be beaten. Well, history's paved by the hearts of the stupid. And heaven is saved for the souls who have no sin. I thought I 
was brave when I said hey to Cupid. But I won't do that again. Cause now I'll never have a friend or lover. So maybe I ought to go. Maybe I might as well go to hell. I might as well. Well, go to hell. My mama told me that hell was a bad place with no pretty kitties to cuddle when you're low. When I'm dead, I will sure miss your cat face because I goofed up and I know I will never leave medieval death row. So maybe I ought to go. Maybe I might as well go to hell. I might as well. I might as well go to hell. Rats, sing it with me. chest and to show an audience your heart. Oh, it hurts, but it's a good kind of hurt, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now I, I can't believe we're almost at the end. Well, I feel like my face is gonna fall off. I <laughs> think about it, but the next time that we see this show, we'll probably be sitting out where they are <laughs> in the audience. Yeah. And, and, and they'll be like real dirt streets yeah. and real animals yeah. and well, instead of two drunks, they'll be like a hundred drunks. <laughs> like a thousand drunks. <laughs> like a million. <laughs> like a million drunks. <laughs> yeah. wow. I'm so proud of you, Doug. I'm proud of you too, bud. <laughs> <Come on, man. laughs> uh, what was I supposed to talk about here again? Suicide. Suicide. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you notice 
notice how in that song, Helvetica kept singing about wanting to kill herself. Yes, suicide is never the answer. No, no, no. It is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Unless you have a terminal illness. Then you should do it. But <laughs> Helvetica doesn't do it. No, she stays locked up in her tower. Uh, now, there is a scene that is not in tonight's show, um, out of respect. And that is the scene where Monk tortures Helvetica. I'm sure I can help you imagine it. Helvetica, curled up in the corner of that dark room. Water dripping. The roof is made of dirty thatch. <laughs> Monk enters wearing his finest robes. He crosses to her. Swish. <laughs> he reaches his hand out toward her. Is there perhaps a tender touch from Monk? Doug! Yeah, wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Scene four. Today is the day of the German celebration known as Festival. Dawn begins the break over the town of Schlimmer. Beef fat trimmer strides forward through the stinky morning mist. press inside, covered with a sheet. He is heading for the town square, but he still does not know the printing press has been destroyed. They'll go nuts and lift me in their arms when I show them my press that I'm taken to the festival. Oh, Gutenberg, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. And the town will have his head when they see the printing press is dead. And the press is in bubble, and his guilty buckle's gonna burst. Ha! I'll just wait and see why men miss the G as they roast in like a broadcast. Ha! Why does he have to be <laughs> so bad? You have this horrible hatred for the Jews. It is irrational and it is wrong. It hurts me to see my fellow townspeople acting in this way. Just think of where all this hatred could lead. Before we know it, we could be in the middle of a Second World War. 
<laughs> Which is why I... I have invented something. Underneath this shit. Which could unite us all! The oh. town gasped! <gasps> <laughs> well, well, well. What have we here? Well, it, it was my printing press. <laughs> A printing press? Now what on earth is that for? It was going to change the world. Get him! The townspeople converge and attack Gutenberg. They are filled with an irrational mob-like mentality. They soon collect wood Light a fire! And burn Gutenberg alive. Lights shift. <laughs> the entire cast join hands and walk to the edge of the stage. Gutenberg's death did not stop his dream. His printing press was later rebuilt and used to print many things. Like the Gutenberg Bible. As well as the very programs you hold in your hands. <laughs> but Gutenberg's dream of universal literacy still remains unrealized. Many people still do not know how to read. We're not just talking about children and blind people. Statistics tell us more than half the people in this room cannot read. The struggle continues. <laughs> Which is why the story of Gutenberg is an inspiration to us all. Because it is not the success that matters, it is the dream. Hi. We are the authors of this show. I wrote the book. I wrote the music. And we, we both, both wrote, wrote the lyrics. lyrics. And we wrote ourselves into the finale of this show because, like Gutenberg, we have dreams too. And while the printing press may not have solved all the world's problems, the Holocaust happened. <laughs> we hope that the story of the printing press did <laughs> impress upon all of you the power of our dreams. Life can be cruel and kinda cold. And often no one's there to hold you when you cry. So those who hope must close their eyes. And trust a brighter future lies in dreams. Where our little lives are rounded sleep. Just the ladies. We, 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 we